Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first BCBA webinar of, um, of 2016, imaginatively titled OMG AMR WO, um, which is the second draft title, the first one being OMG AMR WTF, but um, not all of us knew what that meant. So uh, we've got a, a double bill for you tonight. We have uh, Professor David Barrett, uh, from Bristol University and he will give us some of the background about antimicrobial resistance and some of the scientific aspects and then we're very pleased to welcome also Amy Jackson uh, it's always a pleasure to welcome a non-vet to these webinars Amy has her own business called Oxdale Communications and she will talk about the importance of communications and, and what role we might have as farm vets in getting that message right um, with AMR so with, with no further ado I will uh, hand you over to David just before David just uh, starts. I will remind you also that there's opportunities to type in your questions um, which you should be able to do by clicking on the panel uh, on your um, on your screen. Type in the questions. I You can do that throughout the webinar and I will read those questions out to the two panellists at the end of the webinar and we'll have a discussion at that stage. So um, thank you very much David. I'll, I'll pass people over to you. Okay, thank you very much Owen. Um, only you could think of a title like that, but uh, we will uh, we will try and uh, deal with the various issues that it raises. So um, what I just want to start by doing is taking us through some of the sort of common questions that are asked around about AMR. Um, although I have to say at the onset, we're fairly short for time, so I'm not going to go into things in a great detail. This uh, presentation is designed largely to stimulate discussion both tonight and then more widely with amongst colleagues within the, the practices and facilities in which they work in the future. So if I skim over anything quickly and people want a little bit more explanation, please put a question in and we'll see if we can deal with that. So people ask, what is antimicrobial resistance? Who is it likely to affect? How big a problem is it that we face? What are the main drivers for antimicrobial resistance worldwide? And you know, what proportion of the problem is caused by veterinary use of antimicrobials and antibiotics? And perhaps more specifically, what proportion of the problem is caused by the antimicrobials that we're prescribing into cattle in the UK? And the short answer to a number of those questions is we, we don't know. Um, we know what antimicrobial resistance is. It's defined by lots of different definitions, many of them uh, relating to uh, antimicrobial um, activities and breakpoints in the laboratory. But in essence, the World Health Organization um, definition here on the screen now I think is quite a good one. Antimicrobial resistance is the resistance of a microorganism to an antimicrobial that was originally effective for the treatment of infections caused by it. And that sort of says that that's it's sort of in the patient rather than in the laboratory. It's a clinical entity. And because of that, some of the breakpoints that are described, some of the definitions of resistance in different um, organisms in humans are, are not necessarily directly applicable in the veterinary field. I don't think we need to worry too much about that though because what we, I think what we need to think about is the bigger sort of global picture of, of what is our place within this um, sort of concern that we have um, within the, both the public and the scientists and politicians and others uh, in, on an international stage at the moment about antimicrobial resistance. So resistance um, or the evolution of resistant strains is a natural phenomenon. This is another quote from the World Health Organization. I think that's something we need to recognize. Antimicrobial resistance is not something created by us. It's not created by science. It's a natural phenomenon. It's a result of evolution um, as different microorganisms compete in uh, their own environments um, and their own ecosystems. But, and this is the, the big but, the use of artificial antimicrobials, i.e. medicines, uh, antibiotics, accelerates the emergence of drug resistant strains and it of course selects for them. And because the, the population in, um, interval of these organisms that we're talking about is extraordinarily short for E. coli, for example, it could be as short as 20 minutes, then evolution within those, um, antimicro sorry, within those microbial species can be extremely quick indeed. And certainly us as host organisms, we, we can't uh, and don't evolve so quickly. So the, it's a natural phenomenon that has been accelerated by the use of antimicrobials. And that's just emphasized in this little cartoon here. The other thing to recognize, and this is really important from uh, a veterinary perspective, I think, is that the genetic 
um, codes for antimicrobial resistance can be passed between organisms and therefore between pathogens for different species. So although we as vets are not dealing with multi-resistant organisms in our patients on a regular basis, although there are well-documented examples of them occurring, it doesn't mean that we're not contributing to the antimicrobial resistance problem. Even if we go into the animals um, and onto our farms and start searching for antimicrobial resistant organisms, we're still not necessarily going to be able to completely answer the question, what part do we play in antimicrobial resistance globally? Because what we really need to do is track genes as they move between um, animal species, well, but within the microbial populations associated with animal species, and then between uh, antimicrobial populations, and then ultimately, bet possibly between commensal organisms into pathogenic organisms. The ultimate um, sort of critical point, I suppose, is whether a resistant pathogen appears in a human, in a hospital or, or even in the community somewhere in the world. That's the, the critical bit. That's the bit that we want to avoid. And from our perspective as veterinary surgeons, we also don't want to be faced with multi-resistant organisms in our own uh, patient species that we can't deal with. But whether or not we're seeing those at the moment on farm is almost irrelevant because we know from the very basic fundamentals of evolutionary biology that if we use antimicrobials and the antimicrobials go out into the, our animals and then into the environment, they will select for resistant genes either within the animals themselves or in the, uh, in the wider environment. And those, of course, can then spread between animals, between people, and as I've said, between microorganisms. So antimicrobial resistance affects us all, either in our professional lives or potentially in our own sort of personal lives or personal health care. None of us know whether we, someone in our family, somebody we know, may or may not be infected uh, right now with a multi-resistant organism which, without wishing to scaremonger, of course, could, uh, in, in a worst case scenario, uh, be fatal. And numbers are, are, are quoted from the literature. The one probably most commonly quoted by the chief medical officer and others is that somewhere around 20 to 25,000 human deaths per annum in the EU can be attributed in one way or another to antimicrobial resistant pathogens. So this is, this is a real problem um, and you know people die because of antimicrobial resistant organisms so we need to be responsible as the gatekeepers for these medicines within uh, the veterinary profession and make sure we use them uh, optimally and uh, efficiently and, you know, to use the word uh, that, that always comes to mind here, responsibly. So just to say again, antimicrobial resistance is not a significant clinical problem for us uh, in the veterinary profession. There, as I say, there are documented cases. There was the colistin case in pigs from China uh, just before Christmas. We've got livestock-associated MRSA coming up now and again. There's been reports of resistant E. coli, for example, in lambs with watery mouth appearing in the literature last year. So it's not that they don't exist, it's just that we're not dealing with them every day and perhaps because of that we're not quite as focused on this problem as some of our colleagues in human health care are. The use of the medicines that we use on farms and elsewhere is, is complex. We don't always fully understand what goes on. We don't necessarily know exactly how much medicine is used in different sectors of the industry or uh, to which animal species they are being uh, delivered. We know where a lot of them are prescribed. We have products that are uh, prescribed um, and licensed for, for multiple species. But what we do know is the high-level data that about 45% of antimicrobials prescribed in the UK are used in veterinary medicine. And the, number, the total tonnage numbers are there on the slide. We need a lot more information and detailed information. And I'll talk a little bit more perhaps towards the end of this presentation about the fact that uh, the EU is going to require data, far more data on prescribing in the future than it does now. And some of us within the BCVA and others and uh, the Cattle Health and Welfare Group in particular are looking at how that data may be uh, made available uh, to the regulators. So the, the question then is if, if we think we need to be more responsible in the use of, of our medicines or, or ensure that we are responsible, what other things do we need to think about? Well, obviously, we're thinking about antimicrobial resistance today, but it's in a context. The context is one for veterinary surgeons, particularly in the livestock sector, of safeguarding animal health and welfare, safeguarding the food chain, uh, both in terms of supplying food, uh, but also making sure that that food is safe and doesn't contain uh, 